Hey everybody, Banani and I just want to wish everybody a happy Wu-Tang Christmas. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Steiner. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture, talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. It, it, it's Christmas time. And honestly, it, it snuck up on me. I don't know why. I mean, last time I checked, it was May. But it's Christmas time. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All that good stuff. Gotta be honest with you, don't really care about Christmas. Don't really care about the holidays. You can call me a Scrooge all you want. But Christmas time... <laughs> kind of sucks. The music's really annoying. The movies are usually bad. I don't care about decorating and my local Taco Bell is closed today. Long story short, I don't care about the holidays that much. Just who I am. But this year, things have changed. My eyes have been opened because the other night I was scrolling through Netflix and on the front page, on that home recommended page, there were the words holidays. Now usually I would ignore such a recommendation, don't care about Christmas movies, but it was 2 a.m. I was in a call with the homies. I said, yo, I found this movie called Holiday. You guys want to watch it? You Don't know why they would say that, but I decided to watch it by myself. And you know what? I ended up forcing them to watch it with me a couple days later anyways. And then I ended up watching it a third time. Am I okay? <laughs> Probably not. Am I still gonna do this thing? Heck yeah, let's talk about Holiday. I am John casually dating on the holidays. There's way too much pressure, it's ridiculous. Try being the only single person left in your family. If you don't know anything about it, Holiday is a 2020 rom-com holiday film directed by John Whitesell, the director of such hits as Big Mama's House 2 and Big Mama's Like Father Like Son. It stars Emma Roberts, that one girl from that Teen Nick show you barely remember, and Luke Bracey, a Chris Hemsworth lookalike as your typical holiday-centered white couple. I mean, rom-com couple. I mean, I mean, they are white. I sort of had a thing for Urkel. Like, like really, really white. Nice. Nice. The plot of Holiday, in short, two people enter a platonic relationship where they only meet and go on dates during major and minor holidays. Hence the title, Holiday. Of course, like any rom-com, by the end of the movie, they end up falling for each other, yada, yada, yada. But what I find so special about this movie is in one scene, they will absolutely condemn rom-com tropes. Oh, it was cockamamie. No one uses that word anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the only word I know that accurately describes every romantic comedy in history. And then in the next, they will do <laughs> the exact rom-com tropes they are condemning. These eyes that are... Honestly, I don't know what they are. They just made me forget my own name. And that's why I consider 2020's Holiday to be a deconstruction of the rom-com genre. And not just that, but the holiday rom-com genre as well. You may think this is just like a Christmas film because it's centered around the holidays. But no, it's centered around every holiday. All of them. You want Cinco de Mayo? You got it, boys. You want St. Patrick's Day? Here you go, girls. They even make a joke about Arbor Day. I once spent an Earth Day chained to a tree with a chick from Greenpeace. It was the longest 10 days of my life. For most holiday-centered rom-coms, you expect the couple to fall in love after being together for like a couple weeks. Very unrealistic. When it comes to this movie though, they spend an entire year together and it's through that year that their chemistry begins to build. It's kind of brilliant. So this is my thesis statement. If this was a college essay, I would have just finished my intro paragraph, which means now we get to go into the meat of the film. I should start out by saying that Holiday is not for the young ones. Emma Roberts' first lines are freaking Holidays. She's lonely. She's sad. There's nothing else to her character. That's pretty much it. We then get to meet the male lead, Luke Bracey's character, who, you know, He's definitely an asshole. He's not really relatable, but like, I will say that this first scene with him is both hilarious and also really, really scary. Nonsense. You're practically family. It gave me massive Jordan Pill get out vibes. Get out! So now that we've met the unhappy couple, it's time for them to meet. 
Sloane, Emma Roberts' character, wants to return some pajama pants that she got as a gift. And Jackson, Luke Bracey's character, wants to return some car keys that he got as a gift. Uh, these happen to be car keys? Sorry, khakis. One of the weird quirk of Jackson's character is that he's Australian. Whoa, that's a little uncomfortable. No Australian people here. <laughs> At least he's not British, am I right, boys? Am I right, though? Either way, the two have a pretty lengthy conversation. They get some free pretzels. Sloan mentions the concept of the holiday to Jackson. Jackson's like, yo, you want to be my holiday during New Year's Eve? And she's like, yeah, maybe I'll text you. And then, you know, that's that's it. That's the movie. It's over. I'm just kidding. It's nowhere even close to being over. This sets the course for the rest of the movie though. Every single part of the movie are gonna have these different holidays. The first one being New Year's Eve. We get a little dirty dancing reference apparently. Maybe by having that reference, I can use that as part of my thesis of this being a deconstruction of the rom-com genre. But for now, I'm just gonna move on because I wanna talk about King Batch. You know, everybody's favorite Vine star, King Batch. Well, he's... He's in this movie, he plays a side character, and I think he gives a brilliant performance. What's, what's Holiday? Is that a new app that I need to download? Another strange casting choice is another side character, which is played by the actress that played Katara in the live action Avatar The Last Airbender movie, a movie that I watched earlier this year, and that movie, ooh, that movie is awful. That movie is painstaking. Why, why did Nickelodeon green like this? Anyways, we skip forward, we get to Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day happens, there's a hand job joke. Ooh, it's just chocolate. Get your mind out of the gutter, audience. Now it's time for Easter, and here is, without a doubt, the most brilliant cinematic moment in all of cinema history. It's just, it's just so perfect. We get a little Cinco de Mayo action. I didn't see any tacos, so I'm a little disappointed in that. But we did get what I like to call the Schrodinger's Frick. After getting excessively drunk, the next morning they find each other in the same room. They're not really in the same bed, but they, they obviously like, did they do something? I, they, they don't know. Maybe they, did, maybe they didn't. That's why I call this the Schrodinger's Frick. Feel free to paraphrase me in your next college essay, boys. Fast forward to July 4th, good old Independence Day in America, and we got some classic peer pressure. Grandmothers and cancer patients smoke pot, Liz. Yeah. Little bit of drug humor. I guess I'm just one of those people that drugs don't affect. And a uh, homie's finger gets blown off. He just blew off his finger, a little bit. Didn't know we'd end up with some blood and gore in our holiday rom-com movie, but here we are. Now, before we get into the third act of the film, I do want to give a quick shout out to the editor of the movie. Whoever edited this phone conversation here, uh, the end call button is pixelated. I haven't seen something this amateurish in a film since Loquisha, and that's saying something. Also, I guess I should mention that uh, King Batch dresses up as the Black Panther. I am the Black Panther. Wakanda forever. But not like the comic book Black Panther that you can get in Fortnite right now, but like the the, the animal Black Panther. And then he kisses Sloane's sister, who is married and has kids. And that becomes like a, a part, a point of contention. What? The Black Panther. I kissed him. All of this. Every single scene we've seen from the beginning to this point in the movie culminates into what I like to call the Thanksgiving Endgame. Thanksgiving, you know, it's you're supposed to be thankful, you're supposed to give, but in this case, Sloan and Jackson are having an argument. After they fricked on Halloween night, they didn't really call each other, so they're kind of mad at each other because it's a rom-com. And why have real conversations when you can just think you know what the other person thinks? And to go a step forward, Sloan goes to get the guy at the mall, and like, I guess, Kudos to the creators for, you know, switching traditional gender roles, having her go get the guy instead of the other way around. But like, you got the choir singing Jackson's name so that they can get his attention. Jackson! 
You got her giving this big speech in front of a gigantic crowd. You were right. I do have feelings for you. You got Santa Claus tearing up for some reason. I just thought this was a really funny shot. But the icing on the cliche cake is at the end of all this, Jackson goes and does a little callback from earlier in the movie. That speech was coconut. Good job. All this to say, because it ends with this, this parody-esque line, Holiday is 100% without a doubt a deconstruction of the rom-com genre. I'm calling it now. It's a brilliant film with laughs to be had by all. And no, no, I'm not crazy. No, I don't need any kind of psychiatric help. I'm as sane as they get. I just know what I'm talking about. Holiday is undoubtedly a, it's awful. Aw oh, crap, you found me. Yeah, yeah, I found you, duh. What'd you think was gonna happen? You threw a bag of chicken nuggets at my head, which I'll admit knocked me out for way longer than I thought it would. But then I come back to my room eventually and you're in my chair. Look, dude, I'm sorry. The interdimensional Zack machine broke on your earth and when it wasn't working properly, I just saw that as an opportunity to jump right in. Finally be myself somewhere. Nobody, nobody listens to me where I'm from. Nobody listens to you because you have bad opinions. Now get out of my chair, you're gonna go back to where you belong. Whew. I can now say with absolute certainty that I'm glad the interdimensional Zack machine is finally being put to rest. Maybe I'll return to it later after I fix out some of the bugs. I just can't go through all that again. I'm gonna have to just start doing all the work myself again. It pains me to say that, but at least there won't be any insurance problems, am I right? Thank you everybody for tuning in to Your Everyday Nerd in 2020. It has been a wild year, but it's been a really awesome year for creating content. I'm really excited for what we have in store for 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed the episodes this year. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.